everybody, I am Cinnamon Cooney, your art sharp on today. I'm going to show you how to paint these very beautiful yet super easy hydrangeas by the sea. This is one of those paintings that's great for beginners or new painters. If you've just been going to kind of some painting parties and you're wanting to do this at home and you want something that is friendly to that experience, this painting is it. It's easy to resize and make it work for the materials that you have. I'm going to have lots of tips and tricks for you guys to modify this for what you're going through at home. The class isn't going to take very long. I expect us to be here even on the live stream for under an hour. I guess we'll see if I babe roof that or not <laughs> at the end of all of this. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. Why do I use a baseball reference? Like I know nothing about baseball and every once in a while I'll do sports references, even though I watch no sports where I'm like, yay, sports. And then I'll reference something from a sport incorrectly because that's what I do. Can you name three baseball teams? The Dodgers, the Padres, the Cardinals. Oh, look, you got three right. Are those baseball teams? Those are. I, Can you I, tell I, I grew up in San Diego? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're painting now. Sports teams. Okay, so, but we're going to paint today. Don't look away, I promise. We're going to paint today. We're going to be doing this on a 16 by 20. This is what we're going to be painting together. You could easily do this on a small canvas at home, like an 8 by 10, or really resize it because you just want to make your little flowers go across and your horizon line be level. So that makes it super friendly. I'm going to pull this away, this beautiful painting away. Oh, there and we'll goes. see our nice raw canvas that's there. Um, we're going to be using cad red, cad yellow, quinacridone magenta, phthalo green, phthalo blue, titanium white, and dioxazine purple, and a little burnt sienna today. Mm -hmm. um, those materials are listed in the descriptions and on the website for you guys to look at. You, can, you don't have to use the paints I'm using today. You can use what you have at home. Use what you have. Use what you have. It's just close enough. Let's just close enough it today right. because this is supposed to be one of those fun painting moments where you just kind of figure out that you can paint at home and painting is fun and you can get something great out of it. All right. We are going to do steps today and time stamp those steps. Well, so since we know what we're using, let's step one. Okay. Well, let's see if we can do that. I, uh, we're do, in do, the do. studio, guys. Step if you've missed one. this for a while. Let's see if it works. We have a step one. <gasps> Woo, it did step it. One. Step one. Yay. The hydrangea right. coast. I hope you spelled it right in the thumbnail. I don't know that I did. Let's not let's not worry about the little details. Hydrangea. Hydrangea. Coast. All right. Okay. okay. So I'm going what to take a tool. I'm going to use a giant size version of this. Okay. This is a tool called a T-square. I have little versions too. And you can grab little versions of these at the... Uh, art store for three dollars these are a little more right i'm going to come down if this is a 16 canvas 18 is sort of the halfway point and i want to come up a little bit above the halfway point here to six right? and i'm going to check that i think that's pretty dead on mm -hmm. so i'm going to make a little mark with a watercolor pencil at the six inch area do, 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 do. So, oh i know that and i will use my big t-square all this is, is to help me get a moderately straight line. So horizons are best when they're straight. You could make lots of little six inch measurements across. Yeah. And be like, oh, I gotta, you know, go like that and then line those up. That's a little thing that you can do. Um, another way to do it if you don't have the T square around is just take six inch measurements from the top and get those there. Put this to the side where it's not going to cause no trouble. Yeah. The other thing we're going to think about is that we have hydrangeas. Now, whatever size canvas you are on, how you'd resize that at home, is the top third of your surface would be sky. Okay? Everything below that is water. Come down a distance. I'm going to use like three fingers for my plants, and I'm going to make a little loose line that wanders up and down to the end of my canvas. You would do that at home on whatever size canvas that you have. I'm using watercolor pencil. I don't recommend using like a Prismacolor pencil or a color pencil because those are wax and they can interfere with the paint. So chalk or watercolor pencil is best. Mm. Guess what? What? Step one, as per usual, is the easiest. 
Oh, that's true. The easiest step is step one. So we got to go to step two? Yeah. Oh, by the way, those of you that wanted to know the disco ball did come in, John may have uh, bought too big a size. It's big. We may have to go smaller. I mean, we could literally open up an Art Sherpa dance club and see how big it is. All right. Did we get the step up? Yep, there we go. Step two. Step two. two. All right. In step two, we're going to paint in our sky, and that's going to be kind of fun. We're going to do a couple tricks here. I'm going to put out my white paint. I've got my abstract acrylic because it's super inexpensive and yet high quality. Except I can't get the cap open. Yeah. No. You need help? I'm going to have you do it. Okay. All right. Go nope. here. Nope. I'm going to definitely come have here. you do it. I have, I'm tethered. You have to come <laughs> over here. <laughs> you take it back. I can't stay there. Well, I mean, I just, I'll put out the propane. Okay. I don't know what happened to that one. It did get, I'm going to go find I'm going to just use propane. We're going to let that one go. John, let's just let it go. We're going to just Elsa that right now. In art, sometimes you got to let things go. I'm going to get a pair of pliers and some warm water later, and I'm going to have a discussion with that cap. If that still doesn't work, I'm going to soak it with some, um, oh, it was just stuck, stuck. All right, we got it. We use pliers. Uh, a cautionary tale to remind you. There you go. There it's you go. Paint. It's a good paint. It's just if you got to clean the cap so you don't get them stuck. Yeah. All right, so we're going to start with a little bit of white paint, titanium white. Any white that you have is fine. We're going to also in our sky use a little of our pink, our quinacridone magenta. Use whatever pink that you have. It's fine. I'm going to grab some of my phthalo blue. Phthalo blue. Phthalo blue. And let's get some of our cad yellow. You can use hue or pure cad. You guys see those colors okay? Yeah. Excellent. So we're going to miss this. Yeah. I just want to have a little moisture on here just in case my canvas is thirsty. And I'm going to get a big brush. This right. is a one and a half inch cutting brush. It looks like a house painting brush because it kind of is like a house painting brush. I'm going to get it mildly wet. And I'm going to load up right onto my brush, both sides, right? Mm -hmm. Woo! A little bit of paint. And I want it to be flowing. So it should have a smooth consistency. And I'm going to go across here. Ooh. Protect my artwork. <laughs> <laughs> Would you do that? Splatter shield. Oh. <laughs> You'll have to show everybody here in a minute. <laughs> I have a splatter guard for my artwork that's on the studio wall. Because I was like, oh my gosh, John. We're going to ruin the artwork. We hung up for a display. It's true. We did. We put one on the wall. So that's nice and white. And okay. it's also wet. That's the important thing. Whether you're doing a small canvas or a big canvas, think of this like as Bob Ross's magic white. Remember that? How mm -hmm. they would do Bill Alexander, Bob Ross. It's kind of like the magic white. It's white, white acrylic paint. I'm going to, while this is still kind of moist, I'm going to come in and get a small amount of yellow. And I'm going to start to think about the inside here. Maybe a little more yellow. Look, we're going to just go back and forth, kind of like a little curved stroke. That's what that is. That's all that is, a little curved stroke. Now, I can rinse this out, but if I'm using acrylic paint, I'm going to want to dry the brush out. Oh, yeah. So we're not going to beat the devil out of it today. Huh. We're going to wring, wring it, wring its little neck. Uh, but we do want to get all the water out of it, so it works. Because hog bristles like your hair tends to hold water. I'm going to get a little of my pink paint and some white. Everything is still wet on my canvas, right? Mm -hmm. So here we go. A little, John's going to move around me. And I'm just leaving a little keyhole of yellow here. Mm -hmm. And you can see where they meet together. Look how we can blend it. Ooh. Soft pressure, just brushing back and forth. It's so blendy. I can get this brush wet again. Wring its little neck till it's dry. <laughs> just be nice. Snugger it. Snugger your little brush in a warm and cozy towel. I'm just not that violent with my stuff. <laughs> Snuggle it. Love all the water out of it. And then we're going to get a little blue on here. Little blue, little blue. If I lost a bit of my moisture, I can stand back and kind of remist. Missed Don't want to use anything with big water particles because they'll leave little spots mm. 
but I'm just wanting to make sure that I've got a little blue here. Come across. Don't want to take out all my pink. Because I want little hints of pink. That's what makes it kind of a beautiful little glowing sunrise. I'm going to rinse this out. Give it that final little hug and snug. And before all of this dries, I'm going to get a dry brush. Another brush that's dry. Uh, I think this is a brush from Ace Hardware. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> okay. But it is. you know what? It's working just fine. The yeah. trick is it's got to be a dry brush. And what that's going to give you is a very subtle dawn. Mm. I can take another brush if I want to. This is from Raphael. So this is a fine art brush. Just use an Ace Hardware brush. I'm just softening these together. So sure. See, now it's fine art. You can feel really frustrated in acrylic about blending. And I've got a whole video about blending. Really what the trick is, is acrylic blends when it's wet. And it gets super particular and persnickety Ooh. when it's dry. Speaking of, you're going to want to rinse these brushes out. Yeah. And then do a good wash after your painting session. Don't leave acrylic paint to dry on your brushes. Give them a little snuggy hug. Mm. Mm. I may be back to them in a second. That one brush was nice. <laughs> <laughs> now, we've got the ocean here and some uh, light and stuff to put in. The trick is, we're going to say that this is a step. Step! Which one is it? The ocean step. I know, but you I don't know what step it is. You're it's, supposed to know. It's, it's I just declare it a one. step. I declare it a step. And then you make it one. There it is. We're yeah. stepped. That's why we teach on YouTube and Facebook, right? Because we can have fun and, and you have to track the steps. And I don't have to count. <laughs> All right. So here we're back to I need to have that nice level line. Mm -hmm. Right. And sometimes I'll have to come back with a little tool and just make sure that I've got some sense of that level line. Right. You like it? It just needs to be a little level, friends. I just want it to, because you don't want the ocean to tip out, is really what it is. You're trying to keep all the water in your canvas. And I'm going to step back. Woo, 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 you go look at it. And look at it, and then I'm going to run back in. Because <laughs> I looked at it, and I know what it looks like. And you I'm going to paint in oh, that's one. all the water. Now, I'll use a slightly smaller brush. Again, looks a lot like a house painting brush, because you can use those. You could use a big bright. You could use round. Your trick is you just want to be able to get an edge here. I'm going to change my water oh. out. All right. Dun, 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 dun. And I'm going to get just phthalo blue involved. Now, coming across my horizon line, I want to do my darndest to just make a nice level edge. Hmm. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's our darndest. And our darndest needs to be good enough. If you were super worried, could you just tape it? You could just tape it. If you're very shaky, if you have um, any kind of tremor going on, you can dry the sky and then tape the water line. And that works really, really well. And we're going to just brush back and forth, filling in everything going forward with our blue. Thalo blue is a pretty transparent color. And we're actually going to take advantage of that, this particular lesson. Yeah? Yeah. It's going to work in our favor. Just go. back and forth. Now, I am being kind of horizontal, right? Yeah. In my brush strokes, a little back and forth. I'm keeping myself level in the painting, if not level-headed in my life. Yeah. Right. Do, do, do. Okay. Now, what do we remember about when does the paint blend? Remember when it's that wet. at all? The paint blends when it's level. So I'm going to do a cool thing. I'm going to put out a little green. Put out a little green on my palette. Whoop! And I'm also going to put out a little burnt sienna because that's about to come into the biz pretty soon. All right. Okay. So now we're going to go into here and take a little bit of our green into our blue. Let's get a little white into that. See kind of a turquoise. Everything is still wet. 
I'm going to start to come back and forth, right? The little white and turquoise on my brush, and I'm flicking back and forth irregular little lines because this is the rippling of the water. Mm -hmm. Water is a mirror. It reflects the sky and objects around it and the light. So I'm just making sure that in this wet area, I'm doing that. Need more water? Anna wants to know, are you, Hi, using, Anna. Are you using a giant piece of paper as a palette? I am, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? I think it works out. I like to always sort of trip up my students and be like, remind them that you don't have to have some fancy art thing to have a good time. Like if all you got is butcher paper, roll with it. It will work. It'll work. Because the magic is in you, not the brush or the paint or the palette. I keep adding a little more white. And look, as I'm blending in, this really starts to become pretty sophisticated water, doesn't it? It really does. Now I'm going to rinse my brush out a bit. And what am I going to do? Since uh -huh. I have decided to not go a violent way, I'm going to snuggle it. I'm going to snug the water out of it. Squeeze it and snuggle it and give it a little squeeze, happy squeeze. Cozy, cozy. Cozy, cozy. Cozy, cozy. Put out some more of my phthalo blue. Blend this in. Make sure it's kind of uneven, right? Mm hmm That's one of the things when we're new to painting that we don't know is that we need these light and dark areas in the water. Mm-hmm. Light and dark. All right. That is... Let me make sure I got this. My darndest. Right? Yep. What I'm doing, I'm just doing my darndest. We're taping. All right. We're going to call that a step. Ooh. Ooh. And I'm thinking, actually, we'll see when we get to the hydrangeas. We may not even need cad red at all. Really? Yeah. I think maybe not. All right. What On to the next. <gasps> One less color and it would still come out. Yeah, I actually think it might. Huh. We'll see. I'll let you know at the end. I think it might not even be a thing. Might not even be a thing? Might not even be a thing. It'll be a thing if you want it to be a thing, but it might not even be a thing. Now, right here, I've got this kind of settling and thinking about itself, but I've got this whole weird area right here. Weird. Yeah. It's going to be the basis of the plants. I'm going to take my burnt sienna and my phthalo green, and I'm going to mix them together to create a very dark green. And I'm going to come out here. Kind of with a crisscrossing stroke. Yep. It's very crisscrossy. Very crisscrossy, rough stroke because these are deep plants. There's a lot of layers here. So I'm going to just make sure that my plants grow down the side. I know. It's too much fun, right? How yep. are we doing on time, babe? Uh, I, you're good. I just want to see if I'm close. Uh, like, am I keeping up my time? Yeah. Excellent. Because I made that declaration at the beginning of the painting. Oh, I wasn't paying 30 attention minutes. to what you said. 30 minutes? No, I didn't say 30 minutes. I think oh. I said under an hour. Under an hour. Yeah, you're, you're 20 minutes in. 30 would be fun. <laughs> I was like. That might feel a little frantic to everybody, though. That might. That'd be like, wow. <laughs> Notice I'm just scrubbing, aren't I? I'm just uh -huh. pushing this brush around. And I'm saying, hey. Cover up some paint. I'm not being precious or respectful of it because I don't need to be. I'm just covering all the little white. Notice all those little white bumps in the canvas. Those can be frustrating, can't they? Mm -hmm. Anybody ever have those little white bumps not cover?
I mean, you guys have been great. You know what? They've been so great. I think we could do a giveaway. Uh, you think so? Throw up the next step, and we'll talk about that. Okay, well, I could throw up a step. Let's so see. So while here. John's throwing up the step, you'll notice that I have two pins. These are our Chirpa pins, not even available for sale in stores. Ooh. And were those the you, ones that were on the table? Y yeah, they might have been on the table. I put them on. Oh, you were. I'm gonna give a set away. That's what I'm gonna do. Now on this yeah. one, because we haven't shipped these before, you have to be in the contiguous United States and over the age of 18. And I'm super the sorry about that. Contiguous is hold still. I'm gonna look at them. Contiguous United States. I'm sorry. We'll try to figure out how okay. to do them internationally. So we'll have oh, there you go. Upcoming one that's oh, international. Oh, those but right are now, cool. contiguous United States to enter. I don't know. At the end, uh, leave a comment and uh, put in Art Sherpa. And next Tuesday, I'll announce the winner who won them. You mm -hmm. get your set. You could raise four available in sale. You could raise your shade. I can raise my shade. Why? Because then we can see your pictures. Okay. Um, like, no, you I don't, cannot. You can't do it. it. No, I can lower my shade, but what I cannot do is raise it. <laughs> All I can do is get okay, more shade. Get there. Don't, don't touch it. It's just that is how it is now. It is. That is where it is now. John can come over and raise it. So um, if you'd like to enter after the show is over, leave a comment. Art Sherpa, um, I don't know, say something that might cheer me up and make me happy about the world. That's appreciated, not required. 18 contiguous United States, void where prohibited, not associated with YouTube in any way. And the entry is on YouTube. You have to enter on YouTube. So if you're watching on Facebook, come over to YouTube and leave a comment after the show. And we're going to use a random comment picker, sir, like we did with the bird hop. Does that sound fun? Because you guys showed up, but I really appreciate it. Nothing's not go up. Nope. Here. It only exists in a down position. Yeah, we'll fix it later. All right. But this is good because we're going to put in some reflections. Now I'm going to get a big round brush. You are? Yeah, I am. I'm going to get a big round brush. Those of you that painted with me for a while know that I love me a silver stone round, right? It's a big round brush. Uh, this is a number 12, but it really is in relationship to my fingers about that big. It's nice to have a round one. What I like about it is all of the bristles arc in because it's interlocked. Hmm. You don't want them to go. <laughs> you want them to lock in. So that's what I like about it. I'm going to get clean water. I'm going to get a little yellow on my brush. And a little white. In fact, I might take my dirty water away. Because it has disappointed me. No, it didn't. <laughs> Hasn't done anything wrong. And we'll try to figure out how to get the this particular giveaway to be international. We just haven't shipped them yet, so we just don't know what's involved. Yeah. I really enjoyed doing the giveaway with my mom on the bird hop. I am making short little strokes. See these? I do. And they're wandering back and forth. This is the reflection in the water. What are you doing? This is the reflection in the water. You know, you can come out and put some of them out a little bit. What's happening here is there's a little bit of turquoise that is still um, wet. So there's a little bit of a blending that happens, right? Hi, Twix. How are you doing? Twix is, okay, Twix is here. Everybody say hi to Twix. <laughs> Hello, Twix. Twix felt like she wasn't getting enough loves in the art show. So Clearly not. She comes over and visits me while I'm painting and then says, pick me up and love on me for like two seconds, and then you can go back to work. And this is whether you guys are with me or not. <laughs> this little roundabout, and then she's going to go see John and pull on his sock. Mm -hmm. If he has a sock. If he has no sock, then she's going to whine at him and say, you wore no sock. Okay, are you okay now? Okay, I see you. I think it's important to see pets mm -hmm. and children, uh, if you can, when they come in to greet you. My mom taught me that. She's uh, had really great relationships with her cats, and people would say, how do you have such a great relationship with your cat? And she's like, I always greet them when I get home. And I just thought, well, that's wise. Notice that we're just on the toe of the brush. You could use a number four round from the Art Sherpa line. You could use whatever brush you have that'll let you make little short water reflecting marks. Look at those little short water reflecting marks. What do we think of those? I think they're cool. Aren't they cool? Just back and forth. You got this. Now, if you're new to painting, you might actually find that making little horizontal marks is more challenging than you think. It will not stay challenging forever. As I come forward, I might get a little blue into my 
my mixture here so that it's a little more reflective in the water. Get a little of my turquoise going again and lots of white. Let's give that water some personality, right? That's what we want to do. Yeah. Rinse out. And we're going to take a look at it and snug our brush. Stand back. Oh, look look at, at your art. If you can't stand back, take a photograph of it and look at it on your phone. Yeah. Oh, that's looking really good. All right. I think so. Let's call it a step and sip our coffee. Because we're coffee. more than halfway through. So we'll step up. Step, step, step. Now, I am going to just put out dioxazine, and I'm not going to worry so much about getting any red out at this point, because I think actually we're going to do well without it. Yeah. I may want to check if my green is dry. Okay, my green is dry. I'm going to just use this big round brush. Yeah. I'm going to load up some purple. I'll get a little white into it so I can see it. If you have super cheap craft paints, you're going to do two steps here. Did you put up a new step? I did. Okay. I think I did. You're gonna, you, this is going to be two steps for you in this step. You're going to paint these balls with a light purple. Take your white and mix a little purple in it and paint them that white purple first and then do the darker purple. And that'll get you the brighter color and keep it from getting so not bright, okay? Muddy and not vibrant. That's your trick. So do them in the light purple, dry it, and then do the dark purple. If you're painting a good paint, oh. you get to go into this purple So hold first. on, just in, just in case, because we're going to call this a step, because I think that I, I didn't step correctly. Here we go. This is our step. All right. Now, so. on here, I like to... Hold on. Very, I'm on the toe of my brush. I'm going to make little purple peeking out, thoughtful, maybe hydrangeas. Some of these aren't full round flowers. So I'm going to do little half rounds, like little half oranges. Pretty dark in the purple, though. Oh, we could just tuck somebody in there, right? But maybe this one is bigger and we see more, right, of that little puff ball. I like to bloom my hydrangeas. I have a gorgeous hydrangea in my yard that I'm really just in mm -hmm. love with. Notice that I'm doing rough strokes because hydrangeas are made of many little flowers. So when you paint them, you want to paint them like they're made of many little flowers and that they have little facets of light that catch different darknesses and different reflections from the objects around them because they're very beautiful that way. And they often, within the flower itself, have a lot of variance in the color. So that's super important to do. All right now, I'm going to come here and be like, "Oh, we could do another, maybe smaller, because this little hydrangea is further away." Mm. Right? Maybe this one has a little friend here. So these are like a pair that you might see. I'm going to come here and kind of put a big one half off and half on. Let's put a little peak of one here. Mm -hmm. What we're doing is we're balancing out the purple as we go across our canvas. If you're painting a different size, you might have more hydrangeas or less hydrangeas. You might fill in those spaces differently, and that would be okay. You want to look for that you have negative spaces where the green can go and that your flowers make an interesting non-repetitive pattern across the canvas, right? Because if you made a pattern, they'd look like corn, like rows of corn. Mm. You don't want that. Nope. And come here and I think I'll make a nice full ball here. And I'll make a little friend. Little friend little friend of also full ball and then we'll we'll put some leaves around them and that's a nice little grouping of hydrangeas there it is. let's call that a step and go into the next one where we add some definition and thoughtfulness and craziness to hard uh, hydrangeas all right they gotta be they've just gotta be fabulous rinse out it's a good time to get into clean water i might need some new cups of water when i get into the yellows and pinks dev all right just in a bit, I'll give you a 
a cup to give me for later or grab a kid as they go by. Yeah. So now I've got to give some dimensionality to these flowers, some zhuzh, some fun. And the first thing I'm going to do is maybe I'll grab a little of my blue and purple. This gives me kind of a deep color and I'm going to come here and on the bottom side of these little flowers, little short marks of dark purple. On this one, I might shade the left side. Our light is kind of coming in from here, so it's going to be going over the top. Their bases and the left will have more. What? Oh, <laughs> you're like, we're texting, kid. Now, between these two, I definitely want to put a dark area between this one and this one. I'm coming in. I'm just using the toe of my brush. Make little short random strokes. So heavier on the left, definitely down on the bottom, right? Now, interestingly enough, as we come around here, that light will shift a little bit. And if we remember to pay attention to that, that'll add an extra drama. Come on. Two of them, if you would, my dove. Two of them, if you would. Thank you so much. I appreciate your help greatly. All right. You guys see that? Yeah. Let's give it a step. We're going to continue on the flower. Mm. I'm going to break this down into you for steps. So you understand how they're built. Once you understand how they're built, you can paint them. Are we stepped? We're stepped. All right. I'm going to rinse out a little bit, a little bit, and I'm going to get in a metal and snugger it a bit, but I want a much lighter purple this time. And I might get some quinacridone into my much lighter purple. I don't want it to be wet though. There we go. Looking for a kind of warm, lighter purple. And I'm going to come here and I'll make little marks. See them? Mm -hmm. They're little fun marks. Oh, that's a fun one. They're little short marks. You could do this with a bright brush just as easily. When I did the small one, I did a little tiny bright brush. Because I did a little 8x8 uh, eight, eight, eight eight to see if I liked it. And also if I could do it in like 20 minutes. Because sometimes I give myself time challenges on my warm-ups in the morning. Mm -hmm. And sometimes those warm-up time challenges become art projects for you guys. <laughs> see how we're just making little marks? Yep. Make little marks. Notice that my marks, though, are many directions, right? So sometimes they're up and sometimes they're down and sometimes they're to the left and sometimes they're to the right. As I come down here... I'm gonna get lighter with my color so that I don't lose the darkness of my flower. Ah. Keep your flowers. All right. Because I don't wanna lose what I worked pretty hard to get. Pretty interesting, isn't it? Yeah. I like it. I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet, towel it off, and get back into my mix just because I want to have a nice flow. So when I make these little marks, the paint is pretty for me. Mm. So what I got to watch out if we're in my studio is the paint drying out because I'm on paper. If you were on paper at home or on a plate, you would be watching out for your paint drying out. There we go. We're getting through it. You really are. It goes super fast. All right. Yeah. And then maybe a mid purple. And I just come through just to make sure. Just add a little touch of the purple. Yeah. If I got to come back in and kind of make sure there's a nice transition, right? A little mid purple. It's about the layers. I'm going to yeah. rinse out. I am going to rinse out. I think I've got more than enough white. I'm going to make sure this brush is clean or change brushes. Those are my choices. 
Mm. Brush needs to be free of purple or change brushes. And the reason for that is we're going to be getting into some magenta and some yellow and some white. Ah. And purple is a contrasting color to yellow, which means when you do purple and yellow together, you're going to get a muted gray tone, which we don't want in our flowers. So if we're having trouble getting bright colors, one of the things that we can do is rinse our brush. See. I'm going to get a little bit of my magenta here. A little bit of my purple and white into that, right? Just right now. Ooh, that's a nice magenta, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Let's come here. Kiss the top of our flowers where they face the sun with a little bit of this. We don't want to take out our purple because these are hydrangeas. Mm. Just want to make sure that we've got a little sunlight on the same round brush. I haven't even changed brushes, guys. I've seen that. It's nice. If I feel like I lose some of my purple, guess what? I just put it back in. Oh, yeah. If I need to. I don't stress on it, though. I just go. There we go. We're getting there. And you take a look at them and you go like, you know, are they beautiful? Are they holding Whoa. the light? Do they look pretty? Yeah. Right. I'm going to come here before I move on to the next step and just make sure it gets some nice purple marks. I'm always checking. I'm always evaluating. Right. If I'm like, oh, you don't have enough dark purple. What do I do? I come back and give it another dark purple. I'm like, oh, you don't have enough purple. I'm going to come back and give you some purple. So from there, let's call it a step because we're going to add another layer of light. Okay. Let's get into the light. We're going to shine a light step. on the light. We're going to shine a light. Make sure this brush is clean, 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 clean. And I'm going to snuggle it, all the water out of it with my paint towel, which I don't use in the kitchen anymore. I'm going to take a little of my white to the side because I want some clean white. Get a little of my yellow mm -hmm. and a smidge. There we go. Got some magenta going. A little white. That. Little kisses. This is the warmth of the sunlight. This is the sunset kissing that flower. I want to get some more magenta on one. I can come back and a little magenta. Kissing the top of these. Do you love doing this, guys? Oh, yeah. This is really cool. This is fun. You can do this with Q-tips, too, by the way. I do one of these with Q-tips. You can use my hydrangea Q-tip technique. All right. All right. Give them some light. Let there be light on your hydrangeas. This is where maybe I thought about using some CAD, but I don't think we need it, guys. Yeah. I don't think we do. It's turning out pretty good. Pretty good. How are we on time, babe? I think uh, it's th 43 minutes. All right. I think we're actually going to make it with breaths to spare. Yeah. Now I'm going to rinse this out. There's a little finishing step on these. Whoops. And then we're going to move on to the plants. You guys ready for the little last touch that makes it what? I'm ready. Okay. So at the end, I like to get back into my blue a bit. Is this another step or is it? It's another step. All right. So hold on. Let me give it a step up here. Give it a step. I like to get back into my phthalo blue a bit and uh, kind of pull some of that color in to everything. All right. Let's do that. I don't know how I'm handling the camera today because it's a new camera. So bear with me. 
This one is going to be a much darker blue. I'm going to add a little white to it so we can see it, but it's not. I'm going to put it on the left hand side. Look at these beautiful flowers. Just a little bit here. It's like a left hand side kind of. You shade the hydrangea on the left hand side. And a little bit on the bottom. And then we move over to the right hand side on these two because of the corridor of light. Oh. Right? So it's not just the left side. Mm -mm. I'm going to come in with a little purple and white. I haven't really rinsed it out. Just make sure that the flower feels like it's got a multitude of petals. Does your flower have a multitude of petals? And does it go into that deep purple? There we go. You just go to your happy. All right, we're there. Wow. We got there. Do you feel you got there? You got there fast. We got there fast. We're almost done. I'm going to switch to some clean water. You get the I didn't even get to drink my coffee today. I know. Okay, guys, remember, comment after the show if you want to be entered in a the chance pins. to win huh? for pins. Pin. Contiguous United States at the moment, we will figure out how to make it global. Yep. It's shipping global I mean, global I still appreciate hard. everybody's comment, even if you're not. We just can only say it in the United States. Yeah, it's... And I'll post the rules and everything in the comments and pin them up to the top at the end. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So. Now, let's put out a little more green. Okay. We've got a pretty good amount of yellow, and I think we could use a little bit more white. Didn't even have to do cad red at all. Yeah. Such a dramatic painting. Such a dramatic. I'm going to hit this cab with a little alcohol wipes uh -huh. at the end, and then it will get it back up by the next time I need to use it. So just okay. if you're wondering how I would fix that for myself, that's how I would fix it. Here we go. We got our burnt sienna and our phthalo green. My same round brush, the number 12. All right. Use any brush that you want. I'm going to get just a smidge of my yellow in here right now. Oh. See, if you didn't add the leaves, this could be a, ray, a, a, a uh, herd of tribbles that have just had their hair done. <laughs> yeah. They've gotten fantasy color hair. They got purple. I do like to hide this front one. I like to put some leaves around it so it's tucked a bit. It's still very round, but it's tucked. Some yellow in the leaves here. You can go darker in some areas, right? Like what happens when you just go pure phthalo. You're like, maybe there's a little shadow there. A little darker in this thing. All right. Let's call it a step. Woo! All right. Are you cooking with fire now? I think we're cooking with fire. <laughs> cooking with fire! <laughs> it's the most steps in the least time. <laughs> well, I just want you to be able to do it. Guess this is a 12-stepper. 11-stepper. 11, <laughs> 11 steps so far. 11 steps so far. Well, okay. You got to sign it. We still have to sign it, so that's its own thing. You're All still right. stepping. So now we're going to get into our yellow with our green, right? Our green is already on our brush. Let's grab a little of our white into that. And we're going to make some bright, vibrant leaves. Sometimes I make those marks a little small. Mm-hmm. Because it's the light. It's catching a few things, doesn't it? They're just around here. You can always grab a little more green if you want to. See, I keep thinking you're done. You're like, I'm adding more and more and more. Oh, and this like, is the last one. Oh, no. I'm like just impressed at like how like I thought it was like good at Tribble Land, but you added all the cool little leaves. Right, let's go. Well, you got to put the leaves in. Otherwise, how does it feel like hydrangeas? That's true. It's Tribble Land. But I like triple land. We all like triples. You could add a little enterprise in the background and just call it done. You can always come back with green. Right? There's never a thing like you. You get the balance. You find your balance, friends. 
Gonna add a little white. Now the trick with green is I don't add white till I have a lot of yellow in it. Mm. All right. When I have a lot of yellow in it, that's when I can get the white into it. Maybe I'll kind of say some of these leaves. Pot a little bit of light. Let's go to the back and take a look. Standing back. I like to find balance. And that'll be the hard part for you is finding the balance in your flowers. Right? Now, for everyone who's asking about the giveaway. Yes. The reason why we do the thing called Continuous United States for free shipping is because we can ship it in the United States. It's called CONUS or Continuous United States. That's the big part that's all stuck together because stuck together uh, Alaska. Because there's a lot of United States that there, you know, we're spread out. Yeah, Alaska, Puerto Rico, and Hawaii often require weird shipping requirements. Now that doesn't mean if you're in Hawaii, in Alaska, or Puerto Rico, if you win, we won't see what we can do. But we know that we can send it CONUS and the United outside the United States, we just right we now. Don't we don't know yet. We have to do some research and I had well, the idea for the giveaway kind of last minute. So this is what we did, figured out we could do we'll figure out how we do it globally. We just don't know yet. Well we uh, no, I know how to do it globally. The problem is is that right now we have to go to the post office to do it, which is a and we're in a COVID risk. So right now it's just a little too risky to kinda of do all that kind of okay. stuff. I don't know. Yeah. So we're gonna do some more giveaways international later. Yeah, but we're we gonna will. wait until the We love our whole our family life. Yes. The painted bird for sure, international giveaway. Way. We're just, uh, yeah. you know, we'll keep doing them and we love our whole art family from all over the world. And it's just much more. I mean, I love everybody and I'll show you, but it is hard to get y'all packaged. Like difficult. not for nothing, for serious, for real. It is like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Do they have to battle dragons between us and you? I mean, that's what the postage reflects. Like there is a dragon uh -huh. between us and Australia that is fighting down Postal, I'm, I'm going to calm down. I think I'm being loud. Um, but you know what I mean. You should sign. I should sign. So on a piece like this, you definitely, you know, you want to pick a color that you had in there. I'm going to take a little of my white and purple, I think. But, uh, you could talk away the last few minutes of your... Of no, no, your, we're going to go under an hour. We're okay. You sure? Yeah. Listen, I'm going to see you guys for a long class real soon. Another 16 by 20. That one's going to be like a two-hour class. Yeah. You know, and then we've got the big one this weekend that's going to be so gorgeous, right? So, and they're all 16 by 20. Plus, we've got some more advanced watercolor coming up. Sign my name. Remember that? How I sign yeah. my name. I signed my name all weird today. You signed Doesn't good. really matter. I wanted to blend it in. It's a blend. Ah! It's too blended. <laughs> it's always difficult to find that balance of... Just the right amount of my signature isn't taking over the painting. Yeah. And you can see who did it. <laughs> That's the balance, right? Yep. Remember, number one thing you can do for your brushes after a painting session is to wash all of the paint completely out of them. Whether you're using Dawn or you're using the Art Sherpa soap, it doesn't really matter. Get the paint out. Get the paint out of the ferrule. Use warm water. Use soap. Finger shape them. Lay them flat to dry. will save you tons of money. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now... Let me know what you thought about this. Definitely enter the giveaway. Uh, I hope you like lessons like this. Like we've got some light ones planned that are more in this keeping. And I hope you guys enjoy those as well. The new studio is open and we couldn't have done that without you. And especially without the patrons and the supporters of Super Chat and stars over on Facebook. You guys literally got us the biggest disco ball in the world. Boy, we overestimated. We like got confused about disco ball sizes there. We did. What is that diameter? 20 inch. That doesn't sound big, does it? A 20 inch sounds like, like that could be a good size, but, but it's like. <laughs> it's like, it's looks big. like a 40 inch. Okay. So, <laughs> measurements aside, art is fun, doesn't have to be serious to be beautiful. You can be lighthearted about it. You paint with what you have at home. If you get into it, you can always upgrade and add more materials. Uh, abstract acrylic is a very budget uh, cost, but not a budget brand in that its quality is very high. So you can use that anytime if you want to start upgrading from where you're at. But you don't have to. Just go with what you have. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm here for you through all steps of the journey. Obviously, I'm super excited to be here today. I would show you all my paintings, but my splatter screen won't go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll fix it next time. Green lamps back. Yep. Be good to yourselves. 
Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye!